So now we're gonna take a quick look at uh, this uh, remote control module right here. So the way that I got it programmed, um, in this case, the output uh, there uh, goes low. It connects to ground if I press the button. And uh, this wire is always connected to the positive supply. So that was something I wasn't aware of in uh, the video where I demonstrated this circuit uh, before. And I did notice um, it wasn't working the way that I wanted it to. Uh, but in any case, here you can see we got blue, that is the positive there. So that's always uh, connected. And in the demonstration video, I just had the LED, so long lead anode to blue, short lead cathode headed towards white, uh, but there was a resistor limiting uh, the current. And um, so I thought I would come up with this demonstration circuit. So these are stranded wires. There's a bunch of little individual wires kind of twisted uh, together. Um, so. Uh, they can uh, come apart really easy and they will over time. I just stuck them into the breadboard But you can only do that probably like a few times um, before uh, they get uh, Really bound up and and stuff uh, So in any case here you can see the uh, red LED. So the uh, positive I got the uh, wire and screwed down there But then there's a little pin at the bottom that connects it into the uh, breadboard that one row there coming to the positive supply and then over here we got negative a uh, little pin down there comes up and I screwed this down uh, to the uh, black wire right there uh, negative so that powers the board ultimately and then the board provides uh, power so out of the uh, blue one comes positive so I can't turn this red LED off right there that uh, positive is coming out and uh, it's going to keep coming out this uh, other end of the resistor goes to the negative supply that is a 220 ohm uh, resistor so I was unaware of that in my video I was hoping I could switch from the positive um, but it is what it is so we have the negative we can switch from the negative there just realize um, so you got to use the same you know positive supply that you got uh, power in the board if you do this way otherwise you can just go from positive of that one to negative of that one keep them uh, completely uh, separate there but uh, we have uh, the red LED will always be late the blue LED we got the short lead the cathode to uh, that jumper long lead the anode there is coming to the positive supply so when I press the switch now it's making its way to uh, ground only when I press the button when I release it it comes off so if you didn't see my video where I programmed it it's a uh, pretty simple so this is toggle mode this is or momentary I mean uh, toggle mode is the uh, next one. So there's a little button right here. Um, apparently you got to press it eight times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight to clear it. It flashes a bunch of times. Now if I go uh, one, now we wait. Uh, there we go. It's lit up. I can press either A or B. So I'm going to do A right there. So now A is the one that switches it. Now if I do B, it doesn't. Rec it doesn't even notice B. Or if I press a different remote, it won't re recognize that other remote, even though it looks like this. It's got to be this remote and it's got to be a so there we press it now we have closed the switch uh, to ground right there so again if uh, I just had an LED between these two wires instead of this extra stuff there as long as I put the LED in the right way now it would be lit up and now it would be off so that's basically what they showed in uh, the diagram in fact I think this was my inspiration just to wire the LED like that when I intended to uh, wire it with uh, other uh, circuitry along the way but I couldn't figure out why it was acting goofy I actually had a short circuit um, but uh, the power supply is limited 20 milliamps of current it was limited 20 milliamps of current and uh, I'm like why why is it like this so I realized something was up now uh, we'll zoom back the uh, red LED does not have 20 milliamps of current going through it I would just pluck the red LED there you go looks like something like six milliamps of current is going to be uh, coming that is going to be used up by this module no matter what see i press the button blue led turns on it only goes up like one milliamp of current maybe two right there let's yank the blue led um it has a higher value resistor and uh therefore not as much uh, current's going to flow through it so even with that little led lighting up it doesn't look like the power supply is noticing any current difference right there so doesn't matter whether this is turned on or off you're going to be using up, you know, about five, six, probably six, probably right on the border of six um, milliamps of current. Uh, but uh, if you have the blue jumper connected to something going to uh, ground, which we see here, 
uh, then it's out whatever here is always going to be on so you can't use this blue one by itself as a switch only if the uh, blue one has a load in between it and the uh, white one right there so if you want to just use as a signal so we got a low signal here you might need a pull up uh, resistor you know um, but uh, in any case you could use this to send a low signal only when in this case the button is pressed but whenever it is switched so we showed number one if you want to do one of the op other options you press it like eight times that resets it um, if I don't press it eight times like I'll do a three right here one two three so it's uh, there we go it's gonna flash it's asking for a key now it's asking for another key and uh, so I believe that will make it so if you press a the load will go on and then it won't go off until you press B I believe that's what the setting is there but there you can see it's working the same as it was before so even though it looks like I programmed the two buttons um, I think it still saved my original one unless I press it eight times first to uh, clear it and then uh, program it with the uh, one uh, click so in any case uh, just thought I would do an update another thing this uh, I mentioned in my longer video that uh, this says uh, three amps right there on the uh, back so I try not to show much of the documentation um, because of uh, you know like copyright or whatever uh, but right there maximum load on the back says two amps but uh, this is pretty thick insulation right there I think for the wire side I could be wrong you can see that wire is pretty small uh, right there and I think these jumpers have an absolute max of uh, or let's look at the pins of the uh, LEDs um, yeah there you can see so it's I think a little bit thicker than the uh, solid wire there solid wire conducts a little bit better than stranded if it's the uh, same time uh, same size uh, but I, I don't think a ton more so um, I might uh, you know use up to an amp on this um, but again that seems kind of high two amps seems really high and uh, you know I think this uh, three amps on the uh, illustration here I don't know why it says that that seems absurdly high to me but I don't know maybe it can handle three amps uh, I doubt it though but uh, in any case I can't tell you for sure one way or the other I don't want to fry these for fun they're not terribly cheap I got four of them for five dollars so they're not bad for a uh, remote I think uh, it says something like 70 meters or something walls might affect it though uh, range uh, for this you know so um, I think they can go kind of far I haven't done a range test or anything um, but uh, even if I can just switch stuff from across the room that's worth it for me to have a five dollar uh, module like this as we saw uses like six milliamps of current so much less than a uh, mechanical relay that I got here because you got a magnetic uh, you need to uh, a coil I mean that uh, you need to run current through for a magnetic field to uh, move the switch so that uses uh, quite a bit uh, more uh, current plus you got to use the uh, voltage that they show there here we have a range of voltage I believe that it is uh, three to uh, I can read it easier person uh, 3.6 volts to 24 volts that range and uh, let's bump this up to uh, actually we can't bump it up to 24 because of the load we can get rid of the red one though the uh, blue one has a 1000 ohm uh, resistor so we can go up to 12 volts and uh, let's see if uh, okay yeah it looks like it uh, I must bumped it up again yeah it looks like uh, the current's going to be about 6 milliamps no matter what the supply uh, voltage is uh, and then now we got the blue LED it's off it's gonna have more current going through it now uh, right there but there you can see we're still well below 20 milliamps the blue LED will not burn out I'm going to uh, move this down to uh, 5 volts uh, right there I had an earlier video I did um, I wired everything up I actually modified the circuit a little bit not realizing the original circuit I you know bumped this up to uh, 10 volts and uh, so I had 220 ohm resistor protecting red LED and uh, when I turned the circuit on I noticed that uh, we cut out at 20 milliamps because that's usually where I have that setting um, but uh, this is always about 20 milliamps so I bumped it up now um, so yeah we can lower that one too um, and uh, so yeah I try to remember to always set this back um, 
as soon as I notice I, I have changed it and I'm done with that higher voltage or higher maximum current just so I don't uh, wire something up thinking I have those settings and I don't um, so that's one way to fry stuff when uh, you forget your power supply is set to output more power than you're used to but uh, and you miswire something of course too that also becomes a problem this will you know help prevent you know a miswiring if uh, we try to get more than 20 milliamps current and if you short circuit it it should shut off it has short circuit uh, protection and uh, so yeah we got uh, this negative I'm gonna go right to the positive and uh, there you can see power supply shut off because we had that short circuit it doesn't just pump out 20 milliamps of current some power supplies do that they'll just keep pumping uh, 20 milliamps if you have a short circuit so that comes in useful if you're recharging batteries or something that are accepting the current really easily. If the current is being accepted too easily, um, sometimes even though it's not a short circuit, I actually want uh, you know to set a current uh, going through it. This will shut off because it thinks it has a short circuit. Um, but uh, yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. Make sure you check out one of the other videos I posted on the screen and check out the links down below. They all help a lot. I'll see you in the next video.